Hi, Little Bob here to let you know that my Bobopedic mattresses offer the comfort and quality of a national mattress brand for half the price. No matter your budget, there's a Bobopedic memory foam hybrid or hybrid plus mattress for you. But don't take it from me. Check them out at mybobs.com. <laughs> This is Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. The crisis widens, the crisis deepens, our backs are up against the wall, conservatives, people of faith, those that believe in the vision and creation of our founding fathers, those who want to see the continuation of the republic. The republic now, as I've said many times, is on its back. It's on life support. It's nearly dead. We need to resurrect it. And the left with the stooges that are the president and vice president, I say that loosely because they were not elected fairly, are using my alma mater that I was once proud of, the Justice Department, as their own German Stasi. In fact, Rudy Giuliani referred to that this week in interviews that he did on cable news, or you could even call it the German Gestapo. Notwithstanding the fact that they're out into the hinterland rounding up everybody that was in Washington in support of President Trump on January 6th of this year, notwithstanding the fact that they've indicted hundreds and plan to indict hundreds more, is the fact that they're using their tools of power to send messages to the American people that you shall not rise up or we will cut your head off. And we see it with the raid on Giuliani's office and on his home, with the raid on Victoria, Victoria Tenzing and Joe DeGeneva's office and home seizing their cell phones. What was this over, this raid? This was over their involvement with the Ukraine. Uh, they're claiming that Giuliani in particular didn't properly register as a foreign agent and that he was actually representing Ukrainian governmental interests. Now, they rarely have used the Foreign Agents Registration Act to hold anybody accountable in Washington because Nearly all of these congressmen and senators are, in effect, agents of foreign powers in one manner, shape, or form. You know, many years ago, the Speaker of the House, I think it was Denny Haster, a Democrat, actually had a Korean lobbyist working out of his office in the House of Representatives. Nothing happened to him. But why are they going after Giuliani? Because Giuliani gathered the evidence, among others, Peter Schweitzer as well, some others, which showed that Hunter Biden was laundering hundreds of millions of dollars into the accounts of the Biden family. And then there was Tony Bobulinski, who came on with Tucker Carlson and gave his speech. I've actually communicated with Bobulinski, but I haven't done it substantively because basically he's clammed up because he's under threat of prosecution too, I'm sure. He at one time was considering being the partner of Hunter Biden. And what was admitted to him was it the big guy, the big guy, or shall we say the brain dead guy, Joe Biden was going to get a 10% cut of this racketeering enterprise laundering money. And where did a lot of the money come from? You guessed it, the Ukraine from a company named Burisma, lining the pockets of Hunter Biden and the Biden family, paying them in a phony way, in a fraudulent way for work that Hunter Biden was going to do. He had no expertise to do it. We know the story. And so therefore, this raid on Giuliani 
and on Tenzin and Genova's offices and homes is designed to take the evidence off the market. It's intended to send a signal that you should not raise this issue of bribery from UK, Ukraine, Russia, and communist China. And Russia and communist China were also sources of the bribery to the Biden family. But it's also a way of gathering so-called evidence to indict Giuliani because they want to take him out of the picture, just like they're trying to take President Trump out of the picture. In other words, they're trying to dance on his grave. Every aspect of the left, the way they use various levers in different parts of the American society, whether it's sports leagues, labor unions, universities, academia, labor unions, as I said, in schools, everything, big law firms, big Democrat law firms that I fight against every day that represent the evil uh, Demo uh, District of Columbia Bar Disciplinary Council is trying to eliminate conservative lawyers. You know, they basically suck up to the bar because they'll never get a bar complaint, you know, and, and God knows what other favors they get in return. But this is what you're up against. And consequently, that's why in my book, it takes a revolution. You know, even before Biden and Harris were elected, I wrote it. It came out in October, but it's still relevant today. More relevant today than it was than when it came out on October 27th, 2020, before the elections. Is that I point out there's no political messiah. In fact, President Trump's going to be indicted for tax evasion and tax fraud within the next month, I'm sure, with this rapid leftist hack, dishonest district attorney in New York, Cyrus Vance, the son of the moronic Secretary of State by the same name in the Carter administration that so screwed up American foreign policy with Iran and everything else. This is where we are today. And they're trying to destroy us. We must fight back. Much like King George III tried to destroy the colonies. In fact, it was Benjamin Franklin who said, one of our greatest founding fathers, either we all hang together or separately we will hang. There was a death sentence on the heads of all the founding fathers and all the colonialists that stood up to King George. And if you look at the comparison of Biden and Harris and the left that supports them, the radical groups, the radical Muslims, Rashida Tlaib, Ilham Omar, and their tribe, the Marxians of the Jewish left, basically, that are just the flip side of the radical Muslims, and I'm Jewish Christian myself. Most Jewish people are not that way. I, I raise that because I want to prevent anti-Semitism, but I get mad when I see these people on TV. And of all the people that have attacked me over the years, mostly it's been the Jewish left. They can't stand the fact that I'm conservative, and they can't st stand the fact that I'm messianic. Actually, they probably don't care about the latter because they're mostly atheists in the mold of Karl Marx. And then there's the radical LGBTQTs, there's the radical feminists, there's the radical blacks, there's the radical atheists. So this is where we are. And that's why all forces of society now that are controlled by the left largely are now being backed up by the Biden-Harris Justice Department. I'm sure the FBI agents don't like being ordered to do these things, nor do many line attorneys at the Department of Justice, although overwhelmingly they are leftists at the Department of Justice. I know. I worked there. I was once proud to be there before it became as bad as it is today. But the bottom line here is that the, Jeff, the Justice Department and its FBI are being used as their own private Gestapo for Biden and Harris. And that's something that we need to keep in mind, because we are up against major forces. And that's why, in my book, It Takes a Revolution, I gave certain solutions to try peacefully and legally. And I'm not going to be the one that incites violence, but there will be others in this country that do, because people have had it. And I'm not advocating that, but it's going to happen. Jefferson predicted it. And he said that because federal judges in particular are not elected, not accountable to the people, they would become despots and tyrants, causing the people to shed the blood of patriots and tyrants about every 20 years, adding what's a few thousand dead to refresh the tree of liberty. Now, Jefferson didn't want to see anybody dead, neither do I. We don't want to see anybody hurt at all. But that's what we're trying to head off. And that's why every... Thursday. You can watch it in real time. You must tune in at freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org, or crowdsourcethetruth.com, which carries it and broadcasts it worldwide. We have our citizens' grand juries. 
Last year, we indicted Robert Mueller for trying to suborn perjury to get my client and friend, Dr. Jerry Corsi, to implicate President Trump in Russian collusion crimes. In the last five sessions, you can see it at freedomwatchusa.org, we've indicted Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, and James Biden for this massive racketeering enterprise to launder money into their accounts from UK, Ukraine, communist China, and Russia. We will move on to others. We've, we're seeking the indictment of John Kerry for sedition, for treason, and passing classified information to the Iranians that we found out in the last few weeks. And we have also, we're also seeking the indictment of Mitch McConnell. We're nonpartisan because he also, through his wife Elaine Chow, Mitch McConnell, former majority leader of the Senate, now minority leader, all in all loser, but he became very rich laundering money through Elaine Chow's family from communist China. They have ties to the communist Chinese Politburo and the hierarchy, the butchers of Beijing. McConnell will be indicted too. We will then try, we'll get a judge, we will pick a jury, we will serve the indictments on the defendants, and they'll have an opportunity to defend themselves. They won't show up because they don't recognize the authority of the American people to enforce laws on their own. And we will then have them convicted, we will then sentence them, and then we will seek to mete out the sentences peacefully and legally. We have the right, as I've said many, many times, even in a leftist state like California, where there's a statute that if you see someone committing a felony or know of it, a citizen has the right to arrest them, a citizen's arrest, and then turn them over to authorities. And here's what I think is going to happen. The military and the police have had it. They see the tyranny that's going on right now. They see the socialist communist takeover of this country. I think they will back us. And I'm going to make a call to the sheriffs and the police departments in this country to enforce the sentences that are meted out. I think they'll do it. I think we're at that point. It's that much of a crisis. And when we form a new government in Philadelphia on July 5th and 6th at our Third Continental Congress, and we'll be, that'll be up on our website, they will also back us up. I believe it, because we're in a crisis. I'm going to be right back with Laura Loomer. I want you to listen carefully to what she has to say. She's a doer. She's a patriot. She doesn't sit on the couch and watch Sean Hannity. In fact, she's not even invited because Hannity just wants people to little feather his nest and Fox's nest. I'll be right back. Dangerous. I don't care. Use the court and the law. Lethal. This is bad. Special prosecutor. Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I'm back with Laura Loomer, a very brave woman, my friend, my client, a fellow patriot, someone who doesn't just talk, but stands up and actually fights. And that's very rare in the world today. Laura, welcome back to Special Prosecutor with Larry Clayman. I wanted to have you on because tell us what's going on in the state of Florida. And we have two segments, so we have time with regard to big tech, how the governor is trying to regulate it, and whether or not this new legislation that just passed the Florida legislature is going to accomplish much, if anything. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me on, Larry. Um, you know, the Florida legislative session uh, was uh, taking place for the last three months. And on Friday, last Friday, it's been one week, uh, officially as of today, it ended. Um, and so uh, with the close of session, of course, uh, there were there were several bills that ended up passing, uh, two of which were cornerstone pieces of legislation that Governor DeSantis uh, made or said were pr key priorities uh, for this legislative session. One of them is known as the Big Tech Social Media Bill, otherwise known as House Bill 7013 or Senate Bill uh, 7072. And the other bill is uh, his uh, election integrity bill. And uh, yesterday, uh, people may have seen it. Uh, Governor DeSantis was in Palm Beach, Florida, and I was in attendance for this. Um, and, um, you know, it was originally in Palm Beach, Florida, where he announced the big tech bill and the election integrity bill. And he came and had his signy die signing of the election integrity bill in Palm Beach. Um, the big tech social media bill uh, originally uh, promised 
that it was going to address the deplatforming of candidates. And the bill was supposed to impose fines against daily fines uh, against the social media companies, companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter for censoring and deplatforming candidates. Um, and uh, one of the one of the promises was that uh, that uh, any candidate running in the state of Florida would be protected by this bill because uh, supposedly, right, this is what the, was promised by Governor DeSantis, uh, they were going to be prevented from being deplatformed. Well, when I looked at the legislation originally uh, three months ago, I contacted the bill sponsor, Blazing Goglia, a rhino state rep in Florida who doesn't know what he's talking about with regards to big tech and unfortunately was uh, put in charge of uh, sponsoring this bill. Um, and... Uh, the legislation, uh, the fines, first of all, were originally 100000 and 10000 What do I mean by 100000 and 10000 Well, the bill discriminates against statewide candidates and other candidates. So if you're a congressional candidate like myself, you're not considered a statewide candidate. And the fines, oddly enough, are higher for statewide candidates. So when I saw this and I testified at the, the Florida Appropriations Committee, I said the fines needed to be punitive, and I suggested they make them $100 million a day across the board for all candidates, not just, you know, this weird and kind of, you know, strange diabolical distinction between statewide and other candidates. Um, and so then uh, I also, you know, began aggressively, you know, going to Tallahassee and talking with lawmakers. I even brought on a lobbyist to talk to lawmakers and address this issue and uh, write the language and told them, one, the fines need to be more punitive, but two, the bill needs to be retroactive because these companies have policies uh, currently that they created in response to my original congressional campaign in 2019 and 2020 that said that uh, if you file to run for office, it doesn't matter if you uh, win your race or if you're a candidate. If you've been previously banned, you can't have an account. And so the language in uh, the Governor DeSantis tech bill stated that um, they may, these companies may, not they will, not an affirmative, you know, declaration or a promise. They might, right, they might be fined on a daily basis if they actively deplatform a candidate. But if you've been previously deplatformed, the bill does not apply to you. Why does this matter? Well, I am the first deplatformed candidate in U.S. history, the only deplatformed candidate in the state of Florida. And Donald Trump is the first deplatformed president in United States history and the only um, presidential candidate who could potentially run again in 2024, uh, you know, rumor has it at least, uh, who, who, who could uh, benefit if this bill actually was done the proper way. But the bill was not done retroactively despite, uh, despite my efforts and calls and, you know, uh, the direction of thousands of patriots on my behalf to call the governor's office to have this bill amended. Um, and so I say that it's a do-nothing bill because the bill has no teeth. The fines are minimal. They only increase the fines from um, – from 110,000 to 250,000 and 25,000, uh, and so still that's nothing, right? If you if you deplatform a federal candidate for an entire year, that's 9.125 million dollars. <laughs> I, I say that Mark Zuckerberg wipes his ass with that kind of money. Uh, We're well, going to be right back, Laura. If the, in the next segment, we'll get into it further, but that's a very good summary of what's going on, and we'll analyze the motivation for that. We'll be right back with Laura Loomer. Now, four words that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor, Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. Larry, you just underscored the general nature of politicians, not just of the Florida legislature, not just of Governor DeSantis, but all politicians, is take care of themselves first, obviously. Don't worry about others. Put your own interests ahead. And that's why the country's in the state that it's in today. It's why we're in a revolutionary mode. It's why people walked into the Capitol, by and large, on January 6th, which is their capital, and protested, mostly peaceful. It was basically a warning shot across the bow of things to come if, if they don't straighten themselves up. But here is, here's the essence of this thing. Does this bill protect 
private parties. It seems to be only geared no. towards no. state politicians going forward. That's another issue with the bill that I pushed for, too. So not only does the bill have, uh, you know, laughable fines, not only does the bill uh, discriminate against uh, tiers of candidates uh, with uh, you know, ridiculous discrepancies between fines that are not punitive, but it also doesn't protect uh, everyday Floridians. It's supposed to protect everyday Floridians and candidates, right? Um, and so I don't know why the bill would only apply to uh, to people running for office, but another thing is, you know, it's very surface level to have this conversation about big tech and deplatforming with regards to Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, there are two companies in a cabal worth over seven trillion dollars when you look at the net worth of a lot of these major big tech if you take the big five right collectively over seven trillion dollars which is um over a quarter of the united states economy so over 25 percent of our economy is dependent on these monopolies that are um, colluding and coordinating with one another in a malicious way uh, to steal our elections and disenfranchise conservative americans uh, but that brings me to um to my next point. They didn't even include uh, penalties for telecommunication companies like Comcast, which of course deplatformed my campaign, or the payment processors. And so, um, you know, I think that Twitter and Facebook deplatforming is one issue, but the more sinister and the more um, egregious and hurtful in terms of how they can destroy your livelihood uh, form of censorship is when the telecommunication and the banks and the payment processors start deplatforming you. And despite my my urgent calls uh, to amend this bill to include penalties against payment processors, um, they were not um, aggressively done, and the telecommunication companies were also not included within this legislation. So as I said, it sounds great on paper, and it makes a great speech and a great, you know, ooh-rah-rah moment to, to, to throw red meat uh, to the base when talking about big tech and preserving our elections, but um, when you actually look at the legislation and the law, it doesn't do anything. Um, and then at the end, to make matters worse, um, you know, Disney was able to basically pressure lawmakers through their lobbyists to be excluded uh, from uh, being penalized by this bill. Um, and so, you know, they're just protecting their interests because, of course, Disney, well, they contribute to the Florida economy, but it doesn't mean they should be able to get away with censoring people. Uh, moving on now to the election integrity bill. The bill does many things, uh, talks about ballot harvesting, you know, bans ballot harvesting. But one of the big issues is that it also was supposed to ban the acceptance of um, outside funds from big tech, uh, specifically Zuckerbuck, um, to supervisor of elections offices. And, uh, you know, coincidentally, or, you know, maybe not because there's no such thing as coincidences, on Friday, the last day of the legislative session, a report came out that said that Wendy Sartori Link, who was appointed by Governor DeSantis, if you recall, after the 20. 2018 uh, recount fiasco. Um, she accepted a $6.8 million grant from Mark Zuckerberg, which was the largest grant in, in the state of Florida given by the big tech giant to influence our elections. And this was never disclosed to me, despite the fact that you and I were engaged in active litigation on the Supreme Court level against Facebook, Google, Twitter, and Apple um, at the same time that my name was on the ballot as a Palm Beach resident and a Palm Beach candidate, um, and the same time that Donald Trump, another Palm Beach resident, was on the ballot as well. Um, and so given the, the judgments against Trump this week by Facebook, um, I think that this is uh, definitely an ethics violation by Wendy Sartori Link. And I'd love to know whether, you know, Governor DeSantis, who signed this bill in Palm Beach County, plans on uh, removing Wendy Sartori Link, making her resign, uh, appointing somebody else to fill her position, or holding her accountable for her, uh, you know, clear-cut ethics violation, and also demanding that the money be returned. Because I certainly don't want um, you know, leftover funds being used for the 2022 election, which she's already promised to do. It's a violation of his policy. So is the policy actually going to be implemented or is it all talk? That's what I'd love and, to say. And this person that you're just referring to is the supervisor of elections in Palm Beach County, where you ran yeah, for she's Congress, a Democrat, correct? And she's a Democrat. Yes, she's right. the supervisor right. of elections. She was appointed by Governor DeSantis after the infamous removal of uh, Susan Booker and of, of Palm Beach County and then uh, Brenda Snipes of Broward County, if you recall, after the 2018 election fraud that took place. Um, and Palm Beach County and Broward County are notorious for this type of election fraud. And, you know, I was extensively reporting on this as an investigative reporter and actually broke the story that finally forced DeSantis's hand to remove Brenda Snipes. So I know what I'm talking about. You know, I'm not just a piss 
soft candidate because this is my election and I'm involved in litigation with Facebook. I know what I'm talking about. And if this legislation is supposed to ban the use of Zuckerbucks, well, then let's actually put our money where our mouth is and, and start by holding this uh, supervisor of elections accountable in the county where the legislation was signed. Right. And of course, Laura, the Zuckerbucks, <clears throat> Mark Zuckerberg is pumping money into elections. He's lining the pockets of election officials, in effect, to try to influence the election to go towards the Democrats and the left. And of course, you know, we had a situation this week I talked to you about. You were badly defamed by a number of publications, Rolling Stone, Washington Examiner, a whole bunch of them. We brought a lawsuit. It landed in front of a female judge in Palm Beach County. You were called a white supremacist. You were called a white nationalist. You were called a Nazi. They accuse you of being a grifter, which is someone who steals, and also someone who <clears throat> had a sex tape, which you didn't have, totally false. And we had a judge, I'm convinced that she is very close with the person you ran against, Lois Frankel, who was mayor of Palm Beach. She's a lawyer. and She basically owns Palm Beach. And she won the election against you. And this judge throws the case out. It's up on appeal right now. I took appeal the same day and says none of this is defamatory. I mean, this is theater of the absurd, but it shows you what you're dealing with. Every aspect of society is now controlled by the left nearly, whether it's big tech, whether it's judges, whether it's labor unions, whether it's sports leagues, whether it's big Democrat law firms in Washington, D.C. and down there in Florida, our home state, or, or whether it's even to some extent the Florida legislature, which waters things down to bow over to the Democrats. And this is the world we live in today. So give me your thoughts on, on that. I mean, give me the thoughts on, the, on how you were defamed and how, you know, this particular judge wouldn't address it. And now it's up on appeal. I'm hopeful that the Fourth District Court of Appeal will, will overturn it. Well, look, this is the judicial corruption that I'm talking about. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate, but, um, but look, this is the problem. I not only am I running for Congress in Palm Beach County, but I am a, um, a resident, a Florida voter, a resident of Palm Beach County. And, uh, you know, due to the judicial corruption and the fact that we have activist judges and, uh, you know, an activist DOJ um, that is now highly, uh, you know, in bed and ingrained with the Democrat Party, they're friends, as you said, the judge is friends with my radical Democrat opponent. There is no true justice. And this is exactly why. You know, when you look at the cases I filed against Facebook, for example, not only did we have an act of litigation against Facebook on the Supreme Court level, but also, too, previously in Palm Beach County, my defamation case against Facebook for when they called me a dangerous individual. How can I be expected to have a fair trial ever again if I ever want to sue Palm Beach County or, or sue um, Facebook, rather, in Palm Beach County um, if Palm Beach County is going to be inundated with millions of dollars, right? The taxpayers are saying, great, we don't have to pay. Mark Zuckerberg's picking up the bill for us. And then they're going to push out all this negative propaganda about Laura Loomer, right? Because it's not a coincidence that I was the only deplatformed candidate and the first candidate in U.S. history to have a very aggressive uh, campaign against big tech as my number one key platform issue. And then the biggest grant in the entire country of all the places where the money was donated Donated to happen to be Palm Beach County. You think that that's a coincidence? There's no such thing as coincidences. This is corruption. This is called, you know, I, I'm not accusing anybody of taking bribes here, but uh, I'd love there to be a forensic accounting and look under the hood and see exactly where every single penny of the $6.8 million went and why they made the decision to hide this. Why is this only now coming out on a Friday at 4 p.m.? Why? Well, because the whole thing is cooked. And of course, we know that the elections, you know, were based upon a lot of irregularities. I believe also massive fraud. You know, you can't say that anymore. The president's down. He lives in Palm Beach, so they pumped the money there as well. They want to keep him down in the future, obviously. They want to keep him dead and buried so he doesn't come back, because frankly, except for him, there is no Republican Party. And you've pointed out that even Governor DeSantis, you know, he's riding high today. But we can remember... Chris Christie of New Jersey, who was thought to be the, quote, political messiah, unquote, and how he came crashing down. And what you're basically saying is, is that what we're being fed from Governor DeSantis with regard to the election bill and also with regard to the big tech bill, you know, frankly, is a lot of BS in many ways. And Fox News is very happy to promote him. In fact, a ceremony yesterday was 
televised live by Fox News on Fox and Friends because Fox News is dying to get right. back its and, conservative and viewers, which it lost. Time, the same time that it was broadcasted by Fox and Friends, just an hour prior on Fox and Friends, they were shilling for Chris Kelly, who was the first uh, legal counsel for Facebook. And if you read my exclusive reports from the Hunter Biden email, which no one bothered to go through, I went through the Hunter Biden emails and I had access to the Hunter Biden emails. And Chris Kelly has been involved in business relationships, multi million dollar business deals with the Biden family um, through his position as a Facebook executive for over a decade. And so and so do they really honestly think that he's an objective source to be coming on talking about President Trump's ban when he has a financial, a personal and a political interest in making sure that Hunter Biden and Joe Biden are protected and that President Trump remains banned? I mean, it's, it's no, the, just, the Republican establishment and Fox News are wolves in sheep's clothing. They are not true conservatives. They're trying to present an image right now because their ratings sank lower than MSNBC and CNN. You even have Chris Wallace. CNN is running commercials, you know, with Chris Wallace clips from his show, you know, from his Sunday show, criticizing Trump over immigration. And Democrats are saying, well, Trump's the problem. He caused the the mess of migration at the border. You know, so the bottom line is you're the real deal, Laura. Okay, and I would say that. If I can say so to myself, I'm the real deal and my clients are the real deal. And it's why I wrote this book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry, because we need to use peaceful and legal means to wage a revolution. Frankly, I think we need a new government. And I'm going to have a Third Continental Congress in Philadelphia on July 5th and 6th of this year with learned people. You're invited if you can come. I understand you may have a a conflict on on scheduling, but you can come in by real time on, on Zoom. Jason Goodman is going to be televising it uh, worldwide. And we're going to have to discuss whether we need a new government because these people don't represent us. And even Ron DeSantis, you know, who's certainly better than the rest, he's not everything that he's cracked up to be. We've got the governor of Texas who goes on TV every day on Fox News complaining about Biden and Harris with regard to the deluge of illegal aliens at the border. And yet Greg Abbott, the governor, has the ability to send the Texas National Guard and Texas Rangers down to the border and stop it. So we're tired of political games. The American people are through. And we've got about one minute. Tell people where they can reach you. Uh, I know that you're running again for Congress in Palm Beach uh, or elsewhere in Florida, as you may decide. We need people like you in government, and we need you in a new government, not this government. But tell people how they can get a hold of you. We've got one minute left. Yeah, people can go to lauralumerforcongress.com. That's lauralumerforcongress.com. And that's where they can uh, donate to my campaign and sign up to get my email updates. And I'm also on uh, Parlor, Gab, and Telegram at Laura Loomer. Um, and so that's where people can uh, support me. And I also have a book that's coming out in October called Loomered, How I Became the Most Banned Woman in the World. And it's available for pre-order online right now. I might add, you can read about Laura in my book, too, when I talk about the Judicial Hall of Shame that the one judge you alluded to at this guy, Rodney Smith, in federal court, sent the case against Facebook to the Northern District of California when you lived in Palm Beach. He was afraid to handle it, a Trump appointee. Laura, thank you for everything you do. Stay safe and keep fighting. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for having me on. We'll, we'll have you on again because what you have to say is important. You're a doer, not just a talker. Before he was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Now for the verdict, fellow patriots, conservatives libertarians, people of faith, those that believe in our republic and the vision and creation of our founding fathers, those that have kids, grandchildren, those who don't even have kids but simply want to see this country survive as the greatest nation on earth. We are dead now. We're on our back. The question is, can we resurrect it? Can we rid the people of the yoke 
of the left that have taken total control of our country, that have instituted a dictatorship in a little over 100 days. Can we rise up again, as we did in 1776, and form a new government and re reclaim our legal system, the rule of law, and enforce our Constitution? That is the big question. And it's not going to happen by sitting on the couch, watching Sean Hannity on Fox News or others, and being entertained. It's not going to happen by your sitting around, talking to your friends, having a martini and smoking a cigar. It's not going to happen by your wishfully thinking that the matters will play themselves out and all this will go away. It will not go away. You can see over the last many decades, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. From the time I founded Judicial Watch on July 29th, 1994, things have gotten much, much worse. And that's why I wrote my book, It Takes a Revolution, Forget the Scandal Industry. I go through with specific case examples, the corruption in all three branches of government. I go through how the government routinely lies to us. And the most recent example are these vaccines. They did not disclose the severe side effects. I have a, a very good friend now who can barely move he took the Moderna vaccine, the second shot. He was shaking. He had chills. He can't barely function. He almost died. And a lot of people have died. So we need the truth, but we also need justice. And our federal judges, by and large, are bought and paid for by the special interests. They represent the interests of the people that gave the campaign contributions to the politicians that caused them to be nominated to the federal bench. Even President Trump, he didn't know who he was nominating because those names were given to him by the Federalist Society, American Conservative Union or others, these Republican hacked lobbyists, and they wanted their people in control as they want the politicians in control. People like Kevin McCarthy, who was outed by Tucker Carlson this week with Frank Luntz. They live together in Washington, D.C. They're apparently a happy couple. And, you know, Luntz is no coincidence as a consultant on Fox News. So it's so incestuous. They're all literally in bed with each other, figuratively and literally. It's like ancient Greece. It's like ancient Rome. It's like Pompeii. And we know what happened there. It ceased to exist. So it's time for the American people to rise up. And in my book, I give us means to attempt to do that, to try to head off a violent revolution. I want you to get it. I want you to read it. Go to freedomwatchusa.org with a contribution of $50 or more, we'll send it to you for free. Or if you don't want to contribute to Freedom Watch, go to amazon.com, booksamillion.com, barnesandnoble.com, and buy it there. It's only $14.95. I want you to read it, and I want you to read the Declaration of Independence, and I want you to get back you know, and reflect and think, do you want your children and grandchildren to live in a world like we're currently experiencing, which is only going to get worse with people running through the streets that hate you, that want to kill you, that say that you're a white racist, that say that you're a white nationalist, that say that if you're a black conservative, that you're not an American, or if you're a Jewish conservative, you're not an American, or anything else. If you don't agree with them, they'll kill you. That's where we're headed, and they want to take your property. It's that serious. And if you don't see it, you live in another world. You live on Mars. Maybe there's some atmosphere there, and you can move there. I say that facetiously because you're not living on this earth. And therefore, I hope that you'll support Freedom Watch. You are the superheroes. You are the people that can make the difference. You are the people like the colonies and our founding fathers who rose up against a despot far less bad than Biden and Harris. As I've said before, the king was not a socialist. He was not a communist. He was not an atheist. He was not a radical in these various groups. He was Mother Teresa compared to Biden and Harris and the people that support them. So that's my message. Take it to heart, as my grandmother Frida used to say, and get to work, get up off the couch, and let's save this country. Not the way Larry Elder talks about with talk, but with actual action. God bless you. God bless America. Remember the father and son help those that help themselves. Thank you for listening to me. I'll be back next week with another edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. 
Introducing Peacock, the new free streaming service from NBC Universal. It's hit movies, current shows, live sports, trending bits, and timeless hits. And that's why you can't not watch. Peacock, watch for free, upgrade for more. Stream now at PeacockTV.com. Law and Order SVU streaming now. Law and Order SVU streaming now. Law and Order SVU streaming now. Law and Order 